Hello everyone, this is James and welcome to Lectures. In today's lecture, I'll be discussing about rhabdomyolysis. Rhabdo, rod like shape, myo, muscle, lysis breakdown. Rhabdomyolysis is a necrosis or breakdown of muscle tissues, allowing the release of muscle fibers into the circulation. And there are two causes, the physical causes and non-physical causes. The physical causes includes the traumatic and the non-traumatic, and these are your uh, motor vehicular accidents or cross injuries, um, fire or electric shock, uh, abuse or prolonged restraints, surgeries, strenuous exercise, prolonged immobilization, uh, such as in coma. And for the non-physical causes, these are your medications, antipsychotics, um, antibiotics, and antilipidemics. The most common are statins and daptomycin. Uh, the use of illegal drugs, such as amphetamines, infection, sepsis, the common pathogens are MRSA and influenza A and B. Electrolyte imbalances, such as hypokalemia and hypophosphatemia. Endocrine disorders, HSS and DKA. Uh, snake and insect bites, autoimmune myositis, and myopathies. And what is the what are the clinical presentation? Okay, there is a triad for um, rhabdomyolysis, triad of signs and symptoms, and these are your muscle weakness, muscle pain, and dark or tea-colored urine. And patients will also feel um, malaise, abdominal pain. Uh, swelling and bruising. And now let's go to the diagnosis of rhabdomyolysis. The hallmark of the diagnosis is the CPK or the CK. They are the same, okay? Your creatinine phosphatidase or your creatinine kinase, these are released from the damaged muscles. Normal on average between males and females is between 30 to 170 or 190. And if the normal, if the, if the CK is five times um, upper li limit of the normal value, and that is an indicative of um, rhabdomyolysis, around 1,000 units per liter. But normally, if you have rhabdomyolysis, the range is between 5,000 to 100,000. Um, another di diagnostic test is uh, lab tests are your CBC, your BMP, LFTs, and the inflammatory markers such as your uh, ESR and CRP. In the BMP, it will show hyperkalemia and hyperphosphatemia because potassium and phosphorus are released from the damaged muscles. Hypocalcemia because of the calcium salt deposits in the damaged muscles. And then hyperuricemia because of the release of purines from, from the damaged muscles. And then another diagnostic test is to do AKG, which will show tall peak T waves for hyperkalemia and QTC prolongation for hypocalcemia. And you can also do uh, imaging, such as brain radiographs, if you want to assess the underlying, underlying um, swelling or fracture. And then you can also do CT if if it's caused by compartment syndrome. And what are the complications of rhabdomyolysis? Number one is acute kidney injury because all these muscle fibers or other components released from the dead muscles such as your myoglobin, it can damage uh, the kidney, it can obstruct and damage the kidney cells. Another complication is compartment syndrome and then also uh, disseminated intravascular coagulation or your DIC because of the release of prothrombotic um, substances. And now let's proceed with management. The hallmark of management of uh, rhabdomyolysis is IV hydration or fluid resuscitation. Uh, current guidelines is one to two liters per hour and then you have to titrate according to the response. When we see response, we're talking about uh, urine output. Okay, you can titrate to 300 um, to 
to 400 ml per hour. But if you're giving resuscitation and hydration or hydration and the patient become overloaded, then you have to give diuretics. And then you also have to monitor the electrolytes and treat the imbalances. Um, hypocalcemia, we don't usually treat it unless it's severe because at the later stage of radiomyolysis, patient will, will have hypercalcemia. So we don't usually treat it unless it's severe or we have to give um, calcium supplementation to treat potassium uh, hyperkalemia. And then for hyperkalemia, you have to give the cocktail, insulin, um, dextrose, calcium gluconate, and your albuterol. But be cautious with albuterol because albuterol can cause tachycardia. Be cautious for patients with cardiac diseases. And then allopurinol to reduce your uric acid. And then mannitol, which is still question mark. Yeah, question mark with mannitol because some author says give, other author says no. Mannitol is a, the osmotic uh, uh, properties of mannitol restore the function of skeletal muscles and it is also a, a renal vasodilator but at higher doses it has a paradoxical effect and can cause renal vasoconstriction so if you give mannitol then you have to monitor the, the patient frequently and then if the patient is overloaded or has severe acidemia uh, uremia or hyperkalemia refractory to the treatment then we have to do hemodialysis. That is all for today and I hope you learned something about rapid hemodialysis. If you like this video, please click subscribe, and like, and comment.